What is the stock market? Listen, I understand that the stock market can be a confusing and overwhelming subject. Flashing numbers, green and red arrows, charts, yelling and running. Get that image out of your head right now. The basic concepts of the stock market are simple. And by the end of this video, you'll absolutely understand it and you'll know how to use it to grow your money. To understand stocks, you first need to understand the difference between a private business and a public business. A private business is one where the ownership of the business is locked up and you can't easily buy it. A public business is one where anyone can buy a piece of the business. A piece of the business is also called a share and the place where you can go to buy and sell those shares is called the stock market. Right now, you can go and purchase a share of a public company. So for example, you can go buy a share of Apple and you are legally an owner of Apple. However, you only own one share in about 16.5 billion. So you're a long way off from sitting at the board of directors table. However, that's vastly different than say a company like Publix or In-N-Out Burger or Chick-fil-A where you cannot just go be an owner. You would need to, it would be very complicated. But those are examples of companies that are private. Now, why would a business choose to turn into a public company? There are many reasons, but for the most part, it helps them raise a ton of money. To explain this, let's create a small fake cookie business called Crumbs. Trademark, my idea, not yours, suckers. I'm 100% owner of the company, which means that every single dollar of profit is mine. However, let's say Crumbs is doing really, really good business and my friends want to be a part of that. Well, I can break up ownership of my company Crumbs into 10 parts and I'm going to keep at least six so that I still have over 50% ownership and sell the other four to my friends. My friends are willing to pay me money to own a share in my business because of two reasons. One, being that they know my business is successful right now and they want to share in those profits every year. And two, because they expect my business to continue to grow and for those profits to become larger and larger in the future. So even if Crumbs is only worth $5 a share right now, my friends are willing to pay me 10 to become owners so that they can take advantage of the growth of my company. Before all of that happened, I was 100% owner of the company. However, now I only own six shares, which means at the end of the year, when we count up the profits, I'm only entitled to 60% while my friends get 40%. However, I got $40 for selling all those shares at the beginning, which is a pretty large amount of money compared to what I had to put into the company in the first place. In the real world, when the sale of a stock for a company goes public, this can create billions of dollars worth of wealth for these companies. And most of that can be used as cash out or growth capital. Buying a stock is also an enormous opportunity for you. If you had bought $1,000 worth of Amazon stock on the first day of 2012, today that same stock would be worth $10,500, roughly. That's 10 times the original amount that you put in, in roughly 10 years. Now, I know Amazon is a golden boy. Not every single one of your stocks that you pick is gonna have that type of exponential growth. However, the point remains, there's enormous upside opportunity to invest in. When you buy a share of a company, you're hoping that that company continues to grow and that the profits become larger and that the value of your investment grows as the company grows. Ignore the charts, ignore the numbers, the red, the green, the up, the down, the crash, the rocket ship to the moon. Being successful in the stock market is as simple as buying stock in companies that you believe will be larger and more successful 10 years from now. Like most things in our economy, stock prices are driven by supply and demand. If there are more people looking to purchase a stock than there are people trying to sell a stock, the price is going to go up. In the same way, if there's more people looking to sell a stock than there are looking to buy the stock, the price is going to come down. When someone goes to purchase a stock, they place what's called a bid. And when someone wants to sell a stock, they provide what's called an ask. Let's say the buyer of a stock wants to purchase a stock for $1.50. And the seller of a stock wants to sell that exact same stock for $1.52. This is called the bid ask. And the difference between these two numbers is called the spread. 
People buying stocks want to purchase that stock at the lowest possible price, while the people selling the stock want to try and sell it at the highest possible price. Eventually, one of those parties cave. When you see the stock market ticker changing quickly like this, what you're seeing is the price of the latest stock sale. Trades like this take place a million times a day, and all those confusing charts that you see are just graphs showing the history of that stock price. There are two types of people in the stock market, traders and investors. Traders care about those charts and the spread and tiny movements and little things here and there because their goals are short term in nature. And what they do is more closely related to gambling. Investors purchase stock for the long term with plans to own that stock for years. If you're watching this video right now, my guess is that you're wanting to learn if this is the right thing for you. I cannot stress it enough. I don't believe that there's an easier way to grow your wealth than through prudent investing. Look, I know that budgets can be extremely tight, but if you have any extra money at the end of the month, I highly, highly recommend putting it in a mutual fund. And I'm talking something easy. Fidelity, Schwab, all these companies offer mutual funds that follow the S&P 500. Now the S&P 500 is essentially just a collection of the 500 top performing companies in America. So as a company does worse, it falls out, and as companies do better, they get in. Over the course of time, the S&P 500 has always gone up, long term that is. All these companies, like I said before, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, they have mutual funds that follow the S&P 500, and if you really don't want to have to think about what you're doing, I highly suggest that you just invest into these funds. But what's important is that you do it consistently. I'm talking once a month, once every other month, whenever you can, put a little bit more money in and just continue to grow that fund. What's most important though is do not check your phone every day. One, you're going to go crazy. You just can't do that. The market fluctuates too much in the short term. Short term is not indicative of the long term plan. If you're checking your phone every day, you're a trader. You don't care about long term growth. You care about the here and now and you will not last long. Investors come back once a month, once a year, once every couple years to check on their balance and see how it's doing. They care about the long term growth of their capital. And that's how the stock market works. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. If you have a question, feel free to comment below and I or a member of the community can try and answer it for you. Be sure to check out my other videos on topics that you may be too afraid to ask.